Uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, uh, thank you so much for uh, being your uh, patient with us. We had a technical difficulty here at our PPRN studio. Thank you, Windows 10. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh dear. What can I say? Um, testing one, two. Right. And that was uh, Peter Pinho testing the, uh, <laughs> the system, which apparently is working. So uh, if we're broadcasting, Mr. Pinho, can we uh, give a call to uh, our guest? Here's his, here's his phone number. Excellent. The joys of live broadcasting, what can I say? And uh, we'll, let's rub the magic jack and see if uh, John Riccio is here. John, hey, it's Phil Hall. How you doing, Phil? Uh, we're doing well. Uh, we're uh, ready to uh, certainly put an axe to whoever came up with Windows 10. This seems to be uh, creating a hell of a lot of problems with our computer. Oh, sure. So, uh, but I appreciate your patience, and I'm glad to have you here on the online movie show. Uh, John, we have a program here on PPRN Radio, which deals with uh, paranormal and cryptozoography, and you have a new project uh, in the works involving Bigfoot. Can you tell us something about that one? Well, Bigfoot Blood Trap, it's based on a true events, okay? It's a, a couple of true events, um, and it features uh, um, the Bigfoot creature, and uh, it's about a, a brother and sister who come across one after inheriting a huge amount of land in upstate wherever, and they capture him, and they decide they're going to bring him back and uh, <laughs> cash in on the tabloids and everything. But they run into a problem, and they contact a cryptozoologist, and he, he kind of turns the tables, and he says he can make more money for them if they uh, go along with his project. That's inter interesting. Is the film currently in production right now? Yes, it's been in production for almost two years now. And um, do you remember that movie, um, I, was, I think it was Poltergeist, that they had all the horrible things happen to all the actors that were involved in the cast? That's right. Yeah, we had uh, similar things with uh, the Bigfoot Blood Trap movie. Everybody in the cast you know, experienced something terrible happened. Uh, Edward X. Young, our star, he was in a severe car accident and almost died, and he was, uh, I guess he, he couldn't work uh, for, for six months to, to almost a year, uh, so we were held up with that. And then uh, during that big snowstorm, he was out shoveling snow and fell and broke his ankle. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> back another six months. John, it's been about uh, 50 years since the, uh, the Patterson-Gimlin film first uh, showed a, uh, if not a walking, if not a talking, Bigfoot. Why have half century later are people still interested in this creature? Because they still haven't found one. Uh, they still haven't um, uh, got a good uh, video. You know, today everyone has a video camera on their cell phone. They have it, uh, you know, little portable ones here and there, and they they still can't get anything. And if they do, it's usually like a thousand feet away, and they have a Vaseline over the lens, and you can't see anything. You know, so it, it's, you know, even that the shows on TV, you can watch the shows every week and uh, nothing ever happens. They never see one or, you know, they just uh, howl and they bang on trees. I think, yeah, I think they should uh, call that show Not Finding Bigfoot because <laughs> right. they, they never do. <laughs> I, I watch it every week uh, just to get some ideas, but I, I never, you know, they never come close to anything. Just a bunch of uh, middle-aged men, you know, uh, yowling in the woods. <laughs> Where do you get your ideas from? I mean, you, your films, just in the titles alone, like Requiem for a Vampire and the the Possession of Father Thomas and Dreams of the Dead. What inspires you to make these type of films? Well, I always liked uh, the paranormal, ghost stories, and I, I like to tell stories too. So, um, I, I mean, I come up with the idea, and then it's just, uh, you know, trying to write it down, uh, write the script up, and then put it together. And then, you know, we work on a low budget, as you know, film, and trying to uh, create a film with a low budget or no budget, in my case, is, is very difficult. So we, we, ha we have to kind of go what we have. Well, I know from working with you on abduction, you took your garage and you used that for a multitude of uh, different settings. Uh, the day I was on the set, uh, I had a scene that was supposed to be a company cafeteria. 
And then uh, the uh, the surgeon's laboratory where I wound up getting killed was uh, the same garage as well. Just uh, took down the posters and uh, changed a few things around. It was probably the most inventive uh, use of guerrilla filmmaking I've ever seen. Yeah, well, what we did in there is um, it's hard for us to find places that someone's going to let us shoot at a location, first of all. Uh, like for a hospital room, okay, forget it. You know, we're not, we're not allowed in a hospital room. We don't have the money to pay to rent one. So we have to create one. And so what I did is I turned the garage, it was a pretty big garage, into a studio, and I made uh, three movable walls, you know, uh, you know, 12 by 8 foot walls. And then, you know, for each uh, section of the movie, for a different scene, we just, uh, you know, uh, changed the walls around. And what was funny is we have to, had to take pictures of the room. So, you know, while we were setting up the cameras, the other, you know, people were helping, you know, recreate the, you know, the room from pictures that we took of it. So, you know, since some of the scenes you'll see a picture in the wrong spot and everything. But all in all, you, you can't tell that that was actually one location in someone's garage. It looked like the real places. One of the things I, I loved working with you on abduction uh, in between shots, you had sh you showed me and some other people some of the footage that you had already uh, shot, and uh, you showed me the opening sequence where the young lady I forgot her name who goes into the uh, motel swimming pool and Roberto Lombardi, who's the the bad guy right. in the movie, is is in the pool. And I said to you that no woman in her right mind would go into a pool with such a sinister looking guy standing there watching her. <laughs> And really, to my amazement, uh, when I saw the finished film, I saw that you actually went back and shot new footage of Roberto going into the pool afterwards, which obviously raised the, the terror level of the, this unsuspecting woman who uh, winds up in the worst predicament. And there are very few filmmakers I know who would just uh, take a suggestion from a supporting actor and then go through the bother of getting the cast together and going back to location and adding new footage to a film. Well... I don't understand why a lot of people don't do it because uh, sometimes the other people have better ideas than you have, and it's it's you know if someone ha comes up with a better idea, I'm going to listen to it because you know uh, nine out of ten times you know they're right or something I'm doing they'll say well that shouldn't be like that you know, maybe you should do it this way, and then we'll try it and you know I I always welcome the cast and crew to to tell me you know what they think or what you know how they would do it. You know, to to uh, you know to a limit, but uh, I I will listen to them because like uh, that that scene, you know, I, I thought about it. I said, you know, Phil's right. You know, we could fix this up and change it around a bit. Where do you get the cast for your films? I would imagine that a lot of actors would love to be in something like uh, Paranormal Activity or Dreams of the Dead. Do you uh, are these? You have a stock company that you work with, or uh, do you advertise for actors to come in to be part of the film? Well, it depends. A lot of the actors, if you watch all my movies, um, they I usually keep the same um, you know cast and crew around because they've been with me for the long longest time. Okay, um, but sometimes you know they'll have a recommendation. They'll say, "Oh, I got this this, this girl or this guy. You know, they're really into doing the movie. You know, can you write a part in for them?" So I get them that way too. And then when I, I run out of those um, people, I'll put an ad at, at like a casting network, and I'll find someone. In fact, for for Bigfoot Blood Trap, I just put out a casting uh, call for two girls. I want to get some fresh faces for the movie, and you know, all in all, you you get like a hundred people responding. Out of the hundred, uh, you know, four will write back, and if you're lucky, the one will show up the day of the shoot. Really, it's. Uh... We have we have that problem here with our radio station where people are say they're going to come in and they don't. So it's sort of disheartening to hear that uh, people who say that they're interested in participating uh, when the time comes they don't show up. Is that common for? Yeah, it's, it's some, sometimes it's frustrating because we'll have everyone there waiting for them. We're all set to go, and they don't show. So what I learned from that experience is I always have like a backup plan. We'll we'll shoot a different scene with the people that are there. And with abduction, what happened with that one is sometimes nobody would show up that was in that scene, and we would just give uh, their roles to someone else or rewrite it on the spot to have the other people do something, you know, that would you know, make up that scene. Uh, it, it is frustrating, but, you know, when you're working with people who aren't getting paid, you can't expect them to show up and you can't fire them. <laughs> That's true. You've, well, besides films, you've also uh, done a couple of web series. How did you like working in that type of a format? 
I loved it. Uh, I, I think it's a lot more fun, Phil. And what I like about it, too, is uh, the movies, this one's taken almost two years to make. Abduction, I think, took six months to, to eight months to complete. With the web series, I could shoot it in one day, edit it uh, like the next couple of days, and have it up online by the end of the week. So it, it's very quick, it's very fast, and it's a lot more fun. For the people who don't know your work, what are the web series and where can they find them? Well, if they go to um, it's at goldcastlefilms.com, or they can go to my website, which is O-R-R-I-C-H-I-O.com, uh, they'll, they'll see all the uh, trailers and uh, the different uh, um, pilots, uh, the TV pilots. We did a series called Ghost Chicks. It was an all-female uh, ghost hunting team, uh, and we actually went out to real haunted locations and filmed uh, doing that. The problem with that is, you know, you wait uh, you know, eight to twelve hours for something to happen, and sometimes nothing does happen, and you wind up freezing your butt off in some you know, dark, lonely place. Your work has primarily been on the horror element. Uh, have you considered doing? straight dramatic uh, films or non-horror comedy films? Are you happy with this genre? Well, I had one that was called Johnny Blue, and uh, Shirley Jones from the Partridge family was going to be in it, uh, but we never got the funding for it. And it, it was it was a drama, and it, it was actually, it, I, I thought it was okay, but people who read the script, they really liked it, and so did Shirley Jones. She you know, was all set to do it and everything. But we couldn't get the money to, uh, you know, fund it. And, and these actors, uh, even though, you know, they haven't been in anything for ages, they still want to get their $20,000 a week, you know. And it, at that point, you know, we, we couldn't promise her anything. So it, that's still up in the air. Where do you uh, get funding for these films, uh, like Abduction or the Bigfoot uh, Project? Are you self-funded? Do you go through Kickstarter or the other crowdfunding sites? No, I, I, I fund everything myself, and that, that's the problem, because I tried Kickstarter and I tried GoFundMe and everything, and I think on GoFundMe, the, the highest amount we ever made was 300 bucks, wow. and it was one of our actors who put in 200 and I put in like a couple of bucks just to, to see if the thing worked. So you know, we never made any money like that. Well, if you're self-funding, then uh, what is the average budget for your films, if you don't mind my asking? No, well, abduction, the, the one that you were, you were in, I think the, uh, the cost was um, under $2,000 for the whole production. Okay. And uh, out of that $2,000, I would say $1,500 of that went to feeding the actors. As I remember, it was also quite, uh, quite a nice lunch, too, for that matter. But... Uh, <laughs> Well, you got to keep the actors fed, and, and they'll they'll act for you. To, and if you give them food to take home, they they'll come back again. <laughs> so it's interesting for two thousand because I remember when I watched the film, the movie looks like it's uh, the budget is much much higher than that. So you're doing yeah. Really a, it, well, I, I try to to do the like the I have really great equipment, and you know I, I I'm not counting the money that I spent on the equipment uh, in the budget of the film. Um, so I, I discount that. But um, I, I try to make everything, you know, as, as Hollywood as I can, uh, at our, you know, the budget that we're using. And the problem is with that is, you know, then we get compared to real Hollywood productions. Um, if you go on a couple of the, um, the sites, they'll say, oh, abduction was this and that. And how it's not as good as this movie. <laughs> and they're talking about a $2,000 movie that uh, is comparing it to, you know, a $200 million production. And that's where I, I think a lot of the, the problems with independent filmmakers, uh, you know, what happens with us is they compare us to these these you know, high budget films, and we can't compete. But there's like a small you know uh, population of these cult horror film people who appreciate our our movies and what we can do on on the budget that we're doing them in. It's funny you mentioned that because I actually went uh, onto the Internet Movie Database today just to look up abduction and some of your other work and for abduction somebody it was one of the user reviews wrote and this is an exact quote i can't believe anyone actually likes this crap movie how, how do you deal with uh with wise guys on the internet making remarks like this well a lot of them are from my uh, fellow filmmakers believe it or not we found out that a lot of them were trashing our film production behind our backs 
you know. Um, and, you know, uh, people say, you know, uh, well, I, I say I make horror movies, and uh, everyone else says I make horrible movies. But, you know, no matter what you do, you know, anything, if you're a dancer, you're a singer, you know, someone's going to say that you suck at what you do. So, you, you know, at first it used to bother me. Then I just, you know, I read the, the uh, uh, quotes now, and I just laugh hysterically because, uh, you know, the, the, you know the, the one said that something about my music, said my, my music was like I bought a Casio, uh, you know, a keyboard, and I did all the music myself. And I happened to have, I paid, um, not a lot, but I, I paid for uh, orchestra-type music on it. So it was a full orchestra sound on abduction, but they were saying it was done on a Casio piano. So, you know, people, they don't even watch the movie. They'll watch five minutes of it, then they'll, they'll turn it off and knock it. Well, also another thing, too, about your films, which a lot of filmmakers uh, really can't say, is that all of your films have, are, have been released. I mean, abduction... Uh, was on DVD. It was, I think, it was the R2 Entertainment label, and the other films are also available. That's correct. Yeah. Well, Abduction was uh, released worldwide, and it, it was also on Netflix for a long time. I think for like two or three years, and then they finally uh, they, they we lost the license or something for Netflix. Um, and the last one, Paranormal Captivity. Um, that wound up that was uh, sold in all the Walmart stores all over the United States and all over Canada. Okay, one of the the, the strangest thing was going into a Walmart store and seeing my movie on a shelf with new releases. So that that was like kind of bizarre to see that. Uh, but uh, also, Paranormal Captivity was released in Germany, you know, with a full German translation. And I heard that they spent like twenty thousand dollars just to. Um, you know, dub it into German, and, and they did a fantastic job on it. In fact, I, I like it better in German than in English. <laughs> what about the the earlier films like Requiem for a Vampire and uh, Father Thomas? Are they also available, or have they been available on DVD? Well, yeah, they were available on uh, Father Thomas. Uh, I, I didn't release Father Thomas uh, for distribution. That was my first one, and, and I just wanted to see if I can, you know, make a movie and complete it and, uh, you know, make it watchable. So, I, you know, and I, I wasn't, like, too enthusiastic about putting that out. Uh, Requ Requiem was the um, the next one, and that one, you know, I, I bought a different camera. I bought a Panasonic camera that uh, was able to shoot in, in 24 frames a second, and that was more film-like. So that one was released, and that, that one also went worldwide, too. Uh, the first distributor had it. It went all over the place, and uh, the second distributor took it, and it became part of a vampire box series set with a bunch of other uh, uh, vampire movies. So it's still out there. You can still get it. And I also sell it uh, on my website, too. So, and uh, Amazon, you can get it, too. So what is the uh, the status of the Bigfoot project? When do you expect to have that completed and ready for release? Well, when I shoot a movie, Phil, I, I, I shoot it, and then the, the next day or night, I'll edit the parts I shot just because it's fresh in my head. So I have like an hour about an hour and five minutes complete and ready you know, ready to be shown. It's, it's, it's just all complete. And I'm waiting now to, to put in the last 30 minutes or so. And it's, it's basically the kill scenes that I have to do. And I had to wait for the, wa the weather to get a little bit warmer because, you know, it's going to be you know, covered with blood and all this other stuff. And it's, just, you know, it's difficult to work out, you know, when it's really cold outside. Well, John, our, our time uh, has come to a close. Uh, again, thank you so much for your patience with our little technical hiccup here on uh, Internet Radio. Uh, and definitely when uh, Bigfoot is, uh, is ready to be released, please drop me a line. We'll have you back uh, to talk about it. Maybe have some of uh, the cast from the, the show on the radio, too. That would be great. And thank you so much for having me. I feel very honored. Thank you, Phil. Okay. Take care, John. Good night. Bye-bye. Okay. That's uh, tonight's online movie show. I'm Phil Hall. Just a reminder, we will not be on next Monday because at this time, PPRN Undiscovered will be doing its open mic from the Brooklyn Coffee and Tea House in Providence. Two weeks from now, we will not be on as well because that's Memorial Day holiday. And please do not wish people a happy Memorial Day. It is not a happy holiday. And if you don't know what the holiday is about, shame on you. Go online to Wikipedia and look it up. And while you're on Wikipedia, look up PPRN Radio. We're there as well. Coming up right after this program is Undiscovered with a lineup of best music talent you cannot find on the major labels or top 40 radio. 
And come back tomorrow, Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Peter Pinho's show is back on the air with comedians Allison Sarstai and Dennis Gifford, along with rapper Famous Adonis and country music troubadour Howie B. Baldwin. And, of course, everybody's favorite geezer, Storytime Bob Edwards, will be uh, doing his ditty as well. This is Phil Hall. Thanks for joining us, and I'll see you again in about the uh, beginning of June, which would be uh, three weeks. Good night.